and welcome to it. Thanks for being with us on this Sunday for On Deck. And today we're taking you back to Game 3 of the 1983 World Series. It was a Friday night, October the 14th, at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia as more than 65,000 fans poured into the vet to watch the Baltimore Orioles defeat the Philadelphia Phillies in a big Game 3. Baltimore won the game 3-2. to two. Now, it's a fascinating game for many reasons. The Orioles were taking on uh, the future Hall of Famer Steve Carlton of the Philadelphia Phillies. And in the game, Mike Flanagan got the ball for Baltimore, but he was relieved after four innings of work by number 22, another future Hall of Fame pitcher, Orioles royalty and Baltimore baseball royalty, Jim Palmer. Palmer in this game, after having somewhat of an injury-plagued 83 season, his career coming to an end in the near future, has his last great triumph as a Baltimore Oriole. He wins the game. Carlton actually takes the loss. And in the game, the Orioles have a slim lead to protect. I mentioned the 3-2 to win, but they don't get much offense. It was a Dan Ford home run and a couple of Rick Dempsey doubles. That was really the offense for Baltimore on this night. But the game, looking back at it all these years later, it was all about Jim Palmer's two innings of scoreless baseball out of the bullpen. I was sitting in the bullpen the first night, and I'm saying, you know, this is great. We're going to get a World Series here. If we win, I think it ended up being somewhere around $65,000. And if we lose, it'll probably be in the $40,000 range. And I said, I'm sitting 380 feet away from home plate. I have to look through plexiglass, and there's a lot of people paying a lot more money sitting behind me. So I was just really happy. You know, if you go back and look at that year, I, you know, I had a major kind of a, a the quadratus laborum, which is a major stabilizing muscle of your back. I kind of, I, I, Tweaked it in spring training. The doctor said, do what you can do. You know, he didn't tell me it was a major stabilizing muscle of your back. It was before MRIs. So I tried to pitch early on. Uh, Scotty McGregor said, it looks like they're stabbing you uh, in the uh, back with, with a knife. And I said, that's exactly the way it feels. So the whole year, you know, it was a great year. The Orioles, I think, won 98 games. White Sox, actually, who we beat in the division uh, series, won 99. But um, it was a year where a lot of guys, you know, Mike Boddicker, was like 25, 26. I think he won 16 games. Scotty won 18. Flanny was hurt a little bit, was 12. Uh, Storm Davis won, I think, 13 games at age 21. So it was a year where I think you saw why the Orioles, from really 65 all the way to 84 when I was with the Orioles, always seemed to have winning teams is because guys stepped up and did a great job, especially the pitching staff. And then, you know, if you looked at the, um, you know, if you looked at offensively, you know, Cal was the MVP, even though Eddie's numbers were as good or maybe better. Um, John Lowenstein and Gary Renneke, you know, everybody talked about, and I think if you were a Yankee fan growing up like I was, how Casey Stangle used to platoon players. Well, how about, you know, Earl Weaver? You know, you, you had something, I think, uh, Gary Renneke hit 19 home runs. John Lowenstein hit 15 home runs in left field. That's 34 home runs. They drove in 124 runs between the two of them. That's a pretty good platoon in left field. So we just had a really good ball club. It was a mature ball club. Uh, you know, we lost the last day of the season in 1982. You know, you had a new manager and, you know, in the fact that, you know, you had Joe Altobelli managing for the first time. So I think a lot of the things that, you know, Earl Weaver had done. And then the other thing is, I think almost everybody on the ball club said, we're going to show that we can uh, win without Earl Weaver. I didn't have a whole lot to do with it because I only, I think, got 11 or 12 starts. But it was just one of those years where it just seemed like everything came together. Mike Flanagan, I think, well, he was 12 and 4 that year. I mean, I was 5 and 4. Um, they said, listen, if you want to be on the Major League roster during the postseason, uh, and they asked Mike and myself, and I said, I'll, I'll go. I mean, why? I don't care how many games you won. Why wouldn't you when you knew? Kind of, I kind of, kind of knew what the, the picture was. Um, you know, I had helped mentor Flanny and Scotty McGregor and Storm Davis and Mike Potter and all that. And that just as Robin Roberts had done it for me. And I knew, you know, Hagerstown's not that, that far from Baltimore. So why not go up there? John Hart, the, the irony, John Hart was the manager who would go on to, you know, be the great general manager, I think, what, of uh, Cleveland and then Texas Rangers and so on down in Atlanta. Uh, so uh, I was pretty comfortable. Um, my arm was getting better. You know, I mean, when you hurt your back and you, you know, I just, I had some, I had 239 pitches in a game after I hadn't pitched for two and a half months. No, no going to the minors, none of this stuff. They thought I had torn my rotator cuff. I said, well, let's go to the bullpen, inject my rotator cuff, see if it still hurts. Because uh, I think I had tendonitis. Well, they injected my rotator cuff. It, it still hurt. I said, 
I could have been 20 years old and throw 139 pitches after two months off. And I think Myron would have been that way. So I needed, you know, I went up to Boston. I saw Arthur Pappas, who was you know, head of orthopedics at uh, Mass General, also part owner of the Red Sox. And then I just tried to get back to help the ball club. And as it turned out, um, you know, on my 38th birthday, uh, that was that was game three, to have a ball go through Ivan uh, De Jesus's legs. I just happened to be at the right time in the right place. And I had I hadn't probably pitched in two weeks, so it wasn't exactly I wasn't really on my game like I was in 1966. The Hall of Famer Jim Palmer, and if you want to hear more from Jim covering ground in all sorts of subject matters, check out tomorrow Orioles Magic the podcast. As I sit down with Jim along with my colleague Jeff Arnold, and we talk about everything from all of his World Series moments from '66 and beating Sandy Koufax uh, to that game in 1983 and everything in between coming up as a 19-year-old, and then getting into broadcasting. His, Of course, his appearance in the Naked Gun movie, we covered all with Jim Palmer, who, of course, has this incredible recollection, and he's a wonderful storyteller and a great baseball mind. And you look back at his broadcasting career uh, some 35 years later, uh, much longer than his, his great pitching career, which landed him in Cooperstown, New York. But uh, Jim Palmer – talking about that 83 World Series, and he mentions to us multiple times in the interview, he really never felt like a big part of that World Series team. But if you think about this, Jim Palmer uh, was a member of all three World Championship Orioles clubs in three different decades. Think about that for a second. Also, with Palmer, uh, he was a member of every single pennant-winning Orioles club. I mean, there are guys, who, a lot of guys who were on two of those teams, but or a few of those teams, but for Palmer to have three rings, and to be a part of all three Orioles championship ball clubs, it says a lot about him as the kind of common denominator and certainly uh, the leader of baseball's best pitching franchise for some quarter of a century, really, if you want to uh, break it all down. So Jim Palmer tomorrow on Orioles Magic, the podcast. Now, when you think about the 1983 World Series, the first name that usually comes to mind is none other than Rick Dempsey. Now, on this October night, uh, Rick hit a couple of more doubles, but in reality, Jim, was that something Rick was known to do? Well, you know, he had four doubles. He only had 16 in the year. He had four, four more in the World Series. Uh, and probably in maybe late August, early September, we're on the bench, and Demper is talking to Mike Flanagan. He says, you know, Flanagan, he says, you know, this is not fair. And Mike says, what do, you, what do you mean it's not fair? He says, you know, I've never been hot for a day. I've never been hot for a week. I mean, I've never been hard for two weeks. I mean, I've never even had a good month. <laughs> and guess who's the MVP in the World Series? That's Jim Palmer talking about his former battery mate, his uh, massing colleague, and his old friend, Rick Dempsey. Again, Orioles Magic, the podcast, out tomorrow with Jim Palmer. You can get it at Orioles.com or wherever you download your favorite podcast. And don't forget, there's a lot of great Orioles content out there right now to keep you company, to keep you entertained, including Wednesdays at 11 a.m. My colleague Melanie Newman uh, has her show on Orioles Instagram called The Grind, sponsored by Duncan. That show is a lot of fun. She's talking to current Orioles uh, about life right now, about baseball, just having a really fun, informal chat. That's 11 a.m. on Wednesdays on Orioles Instagram, and it is called The Grind, sponsored by Duncan. The Orioles are partnering with the Salvation Army to provide thousands of meals every day to vulnerable seniors in our Baltimore community. Camden Yards will be the central hub for packing and distribution. Volunteers are needed to learn how you can help. Visit Orioles.com slash community resources. Well, that does it for this edition of On Deck. Thank you so much for being with us. Coming up, don't miss it. Game three of the 1983 World Series. In some ways, for Orioles fans, a great game, but bittersweet because it's the really the final pitching triumph of the future Hall of Famer, Jim Palmer, but a crowded veteran stadium on this Friday night. More than 65,000 fans to watch Game 3 of this World Series of Baseball. It's coming up. Enjoy it, everybody.